Hello YouTubers and ham radio friends. KB9RLW here, Kevin. And I thought I'd put together a little video on the construction of my magnetic loop antenna. I'm going to go over the uh, construction method I used, the dimensions, some of the technical stuff, show you the tuning section, and then we'll talk about uh, performance and maybe even do a uh, on-air demonstration. So anyway, this is my magnetic loop. Let's take a closer look at it. Okay, we'll start at the top. Top down, right? The magnetic loop consists of two hoops. We have a large outer hoop that in this case is about three foot in diameter. And then we have a smaller uh, driving loop or uh, the coupling loop where the uh, uh, coax is connected that is one-fifth the size of the larger loop. Now I use PVC pipe for the construction. It's a nice cheap material to work with, plenty strong, easy to do things like uh, put together pieces to make you know cross assemblies and all that. There's the uh, matching section and that goes down to a stand that I built. So let's start up here with the uh, 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 the top. As you can see I took a little T piece of PVC and simply sawed a little section of it out there for support. Use zip ties to put it all together. The uh, large copper loop is tied at the top there. The smaller loop, zoom in, focus, yeah camcorders. There we go. Um, is supported there only and if we come down eh, it's not going to focus very well there we go uh, another T piece at the bottom of the driven loop is where the coax connects let's we'll see if we can get this to focus when I zoom in might have to step back and zoom further. There we go. You can see that the coax comes out of the center of the tube and is soldered directly to the driven loop. Now what we have here is this is a 3 uh, inch copper pipe like you would use for a water line and this outer loop is a one half inch outer diameter copper pipe. You want to bend that into a circle. It's kind of hard to work with if you don't have a pipe bender. So what I did is just kinked it every so many inches and worked it until I had a nice circle. I bent that by hand to make the driven loop. And then they come around here to the tuning assembly. I've got it inside of a plastic case. I'll pop that off and we'll talk about that. Okay, this is the heart of a magnetic loop. The outer loop comes down to a variable capacitor which is how you tune it. I've soldered it here and you want to keep these wires as short as possible to the capacitor and I didn't really use as thick of wires I probably should have used. You want to use a very good solid connection here but this is primarily a QRP antenna so it's not as important as it would be if you were running serious power. Because of the characteristics of the magnetic loop you have very high RF voltages at this point. At, uh, well, uh, around 30 watts of power, I was getting up just over a kilovolt of RF of voltage here. So I've discovered that with this capacitor, which has decent spacing, it's not as wide as, as it would be if you wanted to really drive some power in here, uh, I can get up to about 35, almost 40 watts uh, before there's any arc over. So I'm going to say the safety margin on this one is a 25 watts um, uh, RMS uh, to prevent arc over, which is plenty for a loop. I've worked uh, to Venezuela with 5 watts using this antenna, so they perform very well. Um, I have a coupling assembly here and a geared down motor that drives the capacitor so I can tune it remotely which uh, is very important in my opinion because otherwise you're getting up and tweaking the antenna a lot. They have a very high Q, a very narrow bandwidth. 
And if you move more than a few kc, you're going to have to tweak the loop. Uh, over here are two diodes and a little piece of wire. And when I show you my control box, it'll become apparent what that's for. It's basically a field strength um, antenna to pick up the radiated power of the loop and give me a measurement. And I use that to help fine tune it um, if I don't have a good SWR meter handy. So that's, that's basically it. It's a fairly simple, uh, fairly simple machine to put together, antenna to put together. Okay, let's look at the control box. Okay, this is my control box for my magnetic loop. I have two alligator clips here to clip it onto a battery or power source. Two push buttons to uh, move the stepper or the uh, geared down motor in one direction or the other, and a small toggle switch that introduces a resistor divider network to the motor so I can operate it at about a third normal speed and at full speed for fine tuning. Remember that pickup antenna? This meter deflects with the uh, radiated power of the antenna with an adjustment over here so you don't peg it. And I use that as a relative strength uh, meter while I'm fine tuning. If you key down at, at low power you can use the meter to, to tweak until you get the maximum deflection and you know that your, uh, your uh, antenna is uh, tuned to the frequency you're on and, and, and uh, emitting as much RF as it's going to emit. Over here on the side is a little uh, RJ45 jack and the end of the control cable has an RJ45 connector that uh, sends the signals out to control the motor and brings back the uh, DC rectified reading from the field strength antenna. And this allows remote tuning. Now I'm going to uh, hook it up to a radio and a battery and uh, show you how it operates. Sorry about the backlighting. It's bright outside. I've got lights on, but I'm probably a bit in shadow. Anyway, I have a battery, a Yezu FT817 hooked up to the loop and my control box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you tune a magnetic loop. First thing that you want to do after you've chosen your operating frequency is you want to tune the loop and listen for a peak in the noise. Um, you don't want to just transmit right away because you're going to have a very high SWR initially unless you are perfectly in tune. So what I will do is um, I will uh, turn the radio up so you can hear the static and I will tune the loop until we hear a peak. You hear that? So now we've got our peak. That means I'm very close. I picked a nice quiet frequency. I don't want to interfere. I'm going to bring the power way down too. I'm actually pretty close, my SWR is low. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on the control box and show you how that meter works for fine tuning the loop. Hang on. Okay, one thing I didn't think about that might make a difference is the camera is very close to the loop, so hopefully this doesn't interfere too much with the video. Okay, watch the meter. As you can see, there's deflection, so I know that I'm transmitting. Now I'm going to tune the loop. You can see the peak. Oh, went past it. There we go. Right there is our maximum deflection, so we are tuned and good to transmit. There's lots of math out there for designing a magnetic loop. Um, lots of formulas for calculating dimensions and size based on frequency and the size and value of the capacitor. But the nice thing about the magnetic loop is since your capacitor is variable, you vary it over a large frequency range, you don't really have to be too terribly precise. Um, you can do what I did and just follow some common dimensions. The main outer loop is three foot in diameter. The uh, smaller driven loop is one-fifth of that. 
And the capacitor that I have is about a 300 picofarad to uh, 20 picofarad uh, variable. One important note on the uh, capacitor, you want to use one that does not have an end stop. If you look at the uh, caps you get out of the AM radios, they'll have an end stop. They only rotate 180 degrees and then they hit that end stop. You can use those, but if you want to use an automatic tuning system, you will need some kind of a micro switch or something that will, that will trip on that end stop and stop the motor, or you'll just be cranking at the ca uh, cap and you'll probably damage something mechanically. Mine does not have an end stop. It rotates a full 360 degrees and can keep on rotating. So um, that makes it very easy to remotely tune. I don't have to worry about where I am per se. I just have to sort of remember where I was, and then I know that uh, if I want to go up in frequency, I go a certain direction. If I want to go down in frequency, I go a certain direction. And uh, it's, it's a breeze to operate. The longer QS flies are when you switch bands. Um, with these values, uh, just uh, not even really measured very closely, this loop is still able to tune from the bottom end of 40 meters all the way up to the top end of 15 meters and everything in between which gives it a pretty broad range of coverage um, on many of the bands. You can go with a larger loop, a larger capacitor, and get down to uh, 80 meters. In fact, I built one loop out of two hula hoops that I took apart and put back together to have a five foot diameter outer loop. And it tuned right across 80 meters just fine. And I found if I ran two turns of wire in the outer loop, made it a two turn um, loop, uh, that it tuned across 160 meters, and I had a QSO with a guy across town on 160, and it was radiating fairly well. Um, it was not optimal. It used wire instead of uh, thick copper tubing. The larger this tubing, um, the broader your bandwidth is going to be. Remember, magnetic loops, their bandwidth looks like this. <laughs> they, they have an extremely high Q, just a few kilohertz. And the bigger that outer diameter um, tubing is, uh, the broader that's going to be, and it's going to give you a little more flexibility. It's also going to radiate a lot better, and you'll be able to get down to a, a lower SWR. I can tune this one on 40 through 15 and get it right down to a 1 to 1 SWR. And it works so well that yesterday, with this loop in my living room in northern Indiana, using about 20 watts on uh, 20 meters, I had a fairly long uh, conversation with a gentleman in Switzerland uh, so from an indoor antenna. So they work surprisingly well, uh, small enough and easy to transport to be portable for camping or field day. A um, little bit hazardous, you've got to be careful. I, I keep this one covered up as you saw and, and you don't want people touching um, this bottom part of the loop while you're transmitting because there's quite high RF values there. It could really shock somebody or, or burn skin. So. Uh, you don't want that. you got to be careful about that. But as far as performance goes, it's a great antenna, low noise, radiates extremely well, and it's always surprising me when I use it. So that's a quick overview of my magnetic loop. I hope you enjoyed it. 73s, and maybe I'll see you on the bands.